Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, of course, it's another year, so we have another Call of Duty game. This time it's, uh, what is it? Oh, Black Ops 6. This is the beta version, of course, early access. I've been trying it on a few different systems with no discrete graphics cards, and these include UHD 770 Intel graphics, Radeon graphics, and 780M graphics. So again, Radeon graphics, but currently some of the best integrated graphics that you can find. So I wanted to start off here then with the Intel UHD 770 iGPU. I'm actually using this as part of an i9-14900K system. The i9-14900K is one of the best CPUs out there. Um, not without its uh, controversies as of late. I do have it limited to 125 watts because I can keep it cool with a basic air cooler now. Uh, it doesn't make a difference in this video because the UHD 770 will be the limiting factor. So first of all, I tried a few different resolution settings, mainly upscaling, of course, because I felt that we'd need it as part of this rig. What I found out though, even trying out this training map, was that we could not get the game to run. At native resolution, it was an absolute no-go, of course, and trying all the different forms of upscaling, which this game does fair play to it, have a lot of, including NVIDIA image scaling, XESS, FSR1, FSR3, none of them made any difference. The only thing we could really do to try and get anywhere near well, 30 FPS was to set the resolution as low as possible, which in this game is actually 640 by 480. So again, it's nice to see that you can still drop to these super low resolutions in 2024. Not sure why you might want to, but the option is there. We certainly couldn't get anywhere near 30 FPS uh, with the lowest internal rendering. I mean, we set the render resolution with upscaling off as well to like 720 by 400 whatever it was we saw about 21 22 fps it might be playable in some areas but unfortunately most of the time it's not but we'll switch to a proper online game here and i'll show you just how bad things can get now it doesn't exactly look brilliant and what's more we have some sort of issue with the textures i found this in a lot of call of duty games it must be the same engine it probably has been for a while now but the integrated uhd graphics do not agree with grass textures i get these multi-colored dots everywhere instead of actual grass uh, don't get me wrong we are seeing at least 30 fps in some instances and i can still wipe out a few enemy players here and there but it doesn't look the best, and that is certainly an understatement. So close to 30 FPS with the UHD 770 as part of the i9 machine. I'm also using 32 gigs of DDR5 at 6400 megahertz in dual channel, so best case scenario basically, and it's still not quite playable. It doesn't matter the game mode or map. My next system is this mini B-Link machine. This has a Ryzen 5560U. It's a low power unit, 15 watts, I believe, the CPU consumes even under load. And it has Radeon graphics built in. They're sort of nondescript. It just says Radeon graphics. But gaming is still doable. And I'll show you what I mean. So first of all, we have the settings here. Basically set things to minimum. I chose the render resolution of 50%. Um, upscaling made things worse. If we enabled FSR or XCSS, the frame rate actually dropped a little bit. I think the upscaling was a bit strenuous on the system. But let's jump into some gameplay now with a 5560U. I like to try and get as close to 60 FPS as possible in online first person games like this. I mean, it's just going to be the most a convenient way to play it makes the most sense, doesn't it? That isn't going to be entirely doable on this little rig. But this is a nice combination of actually being able to see what you're doing and um, performance. I mean, we could try and target 60, but we'd be dropping the 37% race scale, and that makes things even worse on the eyes. Plus, it still doesn't quite get to 60 frames per second. The frame rate actually isn't all that improved. Here we're seeing between 40 and 55 most of the time, with a few drops lower than that, especially when we respawn, which in my case is quite often. As you can see, the CPU, oh, it's actually utilizing about 20 watts maximum. So yeah, between 15 and 25 watts most of the time. I've also assigned, or the system has automatically assigned four gigs of VRAM. And um, we only have 16 gigs of system memory, so it assigns four gigs of VRAM to the graphics side of the chip. And I think considering the specs, 
this is okay, you know, it's playable to an extent, we can still wipe out a few enemy players, and it's far from the worst experience I've ever, um, well, experienced in a graphics card-less testing video. But let's move on to the best of the bunch, the 780M iGPU as part of the Ryzen 8700G. So there are a couple of ways we can approach this. We can either choose minimum or basic settings. And to be honest, there is a little bit of a performance difference between the two, but both minimum and basic at 1080p are going to allow for at least 60 FPS, which is nice to see. We'll start off with the minimum gameplay, but we won't enable FSR. You can if you want to. I didn't feel it necessary. I like to play at native resolution where I can, and in this case, it was certainly doable uh, for 60 plus FPS with a few drops here and there. Doesn't look the best at lower settings, but it's still passable in my opinion. I mean, it's Call of Duty. These games can look really good when you turn things way up, but there's still also that element of looking absolutely terrible when the settings are at their lowest. I don't think the uh, textures look all that good uh, at very low, but of course, I mean, they wouldn't. It's, it's not important in my opinion. If you're playing Call of Duty, I think most of the time you're playing it for fun, aren't you? Textures don't really come into it all that much. You are gonna notice a few blurry edges here and there, but in order to get playable frame rates, this is a sacrifice we have to make, and I don't think it's a bad sacrifice to make at all. So our 8700G system uh, is doing okay. We're staying at less than 70 degrees with the stock cooler here. I'm also using this with 32 gigs of DDR5 at 6400 megahertz as well. So a very good case scenario in, uh, in terms of our setup here and we're consuming less than 100 watts of power as well. I am going to show you the visuals bumped up to basic now. This does make a slight difference over minimum. Things do look a little better but not significantly so and I think if you want as many frames as possible but you want to retain that native 1080p resolution in the hopes of targeting close to 60 FPS which is always good in an FPS title uh, then you're going to want to maintain minimum but basic still looks good of course and um, the frame rate will still go above 70 in some cases which is nice to see but most of the time you're going to be getting between 50 and 65 with a few dips and drops i will of course have the exact figures up on screen here and there and what i will say is that it felt pretty consistent overall as well i tested the same map um, i believe it's called derelict but i tested the same map across all of these tests i didn't bother benchmarking the 770 results properly, of course. There's no on-screen figures for that one, as you saw, because you saw how bad that was. You couldn't really play like that, I guess. But the 5560U and Radeon graphics and the 8700G and 780M graphics, yeah, Black Ops 6, at least the beta, is very much doable. And it'll be interesting to see how performance changes when the full game comes out. I'll be sure to test it again then with maybe the same, maybe different hardware as well, and uh, different visual settings. We'll go a bit more in depth, but for now, you should have a good time even with certain integrated graphics solutions. With that, thanks for watching. I hope this video has been helpful and I'll see you all next time.